Morning everyone and welcome to another episode of Sunday Morning Drives. So hopefully you've seen our latest video of the Ford Ranger and the reason why we're in the same spot again is because we're bringing you yet another car today which is the Ford Everest. Talk to us a little bit more about the new Ford Everest Frank. Uh, so we have a nice looking grey colour, metallic grey uh, Everest here. It's a 2 litre bi-turbo diesel engine uh, and it's a 7 seater as well. So it's a very nice family car uh, compared to, you know, it's a different car from the, from the Ranger, the Ute. Yeah, so the um, Ranger that we have here is a 3 litre V6 uh, twin turbo diesel. Yeah. And this is a 2 litre uh, bi-turbo diesel. So they're a little bit different. We yeah. chose different engines so that we can have a bit of a comparison. That's um, right. So that we can bring you both types of cars. Uh, the Everest is actually on the same platform as the Ranger. Yeah, right, the main difference is the body shape. Yep. and there's some interior differences some exterior differences but majority of the car is basically the on the same platform yeah um, so we're not actually going to show you everything about the new everest because you can just watch our ranger video um, and get some of the the, the information from there um, but what we'll be doing is comparing the everest with the new ranger so that you can see the differences between the two so stay tuned and uh, enjoy the video This is the Trend, the entry-level Everest, uh, and it's got the two-litre diesel engine. Uh, so this starts at around about, you know, 71, 72,000, so early 70,000 New Zealand dollars. Uh, and that's actually a really good deal because you get a lot of technology and you get a lot of standard features with the Everest. Um, so I was actually quite surprised how, how affordable this is. And you also get a third row, so you get seven seats with the Everest as well. So it's a really, really practical car. All right, let's go have a look at some of the features. Yeah, so I've just noticed some of the differences in the exterior at the front here. So you can see that there's a little bit of an accent down the bottom of the Ranger, uh, and that doesn't uh, really have the same color um, in the Everest. The Everest is body color, and the shape is a little bit different as well. So the Ranger wall track is pretty blacked out, whereas the Everest has a bit of chrome trim around the outside, um, just to make it look a little bit more, I guess, like a city car mm. rather than a utilitarian car only. Yep. The front suspension is the same. It's got a double wishbone setup. Um, so, so both uh, have the same front suspension, actually, um, the Everest and the Ranger Wildtrak. But if you move to the back, the rear suspension is a bit different. So the Ever Everest has got a coil spring setup uh, compared to the uh, Ranger Wildtrak, which has a leaf, leaf spring uh, setup. So the leaf spring actually handles, I guess, uh, much more uh, weight and the coil spring has a bit more comfort and for an SUV like this for family use, it's probably a better suited rear suspension. Yeah, it probably handles a little bit better as well with yeah. the coil springs. Yeah. Yep. So the Everest again comes with a tow bar um, and it's got quite good towing capacity. I'm pretty sure the Everest is also 3.5 tons towing yep, capacity. Yeah, it is 3.5 tons. It's got electric tailgate as standard, which is pretty practical and pretty nice for a big SUV. All right, everyone, so now that we've got the electronic tailgate open, uh, you'll see that the back here is completely different to the Ranger. This is the biggest difference between the two cars. Um, so this is an SUV, obviously, uh, that has some off-road capability. And this is a very traditional sort of SUV or station wagon uh, back end with a lot of load space. Uh, it's really practical because the area is really huge. You get a massive, massive amount of boot space. Uh, and there's actually not much of a lip here. So it's quite handy and quite practical in terms of being able to load things into the car. Uh, there's a little bit of storage down at the bottom here underneath uh, the lid. And also you have access to some tools. Uh, there is actually a spare wheel for the car. So similar to the Ranger, that's really good. I'm really not a fan of manufacturers taking away spare wheels. Um, because if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and you get a flat tire, then you're a bit, um, bit stuffed. So um, the other great thing about the Everest is that you get a third row of seats, completely standard, 
So this is not an option, this, this comes in every single Everest and it's quite simple to raise the seats. You just pull on these, um, these handles and you've got a row of rear seats, another two extra seats. Um, so this is great as a family car, you know, you can take your kids, you can take their friends, uh, you can take the whole family on a trip. Um, so that's really, really handy. And then when you want to fold these down, then obviously um, you get a lot of load space as well. And the load space is actually really flat in this car, um, which again is a really good design feature. It is actually a lot flatter than I expected as well. So well done Ford, it's really good. Sweet, so staying at the back here, we've also got some hooks on the side here and also some anchor points um, for securing your load. So that's really important as well. Uh, the other thing that differs from the Ranger is that uh, the vents at the back are actually quite different. So in the Ranger, you've got that center console with the vents in the middle, whereas in the Everest, you've actually got vents up the top there so that it can supply uh, fresh air and climate control to the third row seats as well. Okay, let's look at the back of the Everest uh, back seats. So the back seats are quite interesting. Um, you can pull this lever here, you know, so push it forward to get to the third row, push it back. And this seat actually changes angle. If you want a bit more comf comfy incline, you can do that. And there's a lever here on the side as well. Yep. Once you pull it, the whole seat folds down so give you a lot more um, storage space if you want to. Yeah. You can see there are uh, anchor points for the isofixes and there are isofix points for your child seat on both of these chairs. Um, you also have a uh, climate control but uh, rotary dial right here so you can control the fan speed basically how much you want and then on the top here you can see there are two vents for the rear seats and these vents are for the third row so climbing into the back seat here wow it's really spacious spacious i've got lots of leg room quite a bit of headroom so it's very good i'm 175 centimeters feels very comfy in here even if you sit three people the person in the middle row still feet you know, feels reasonably spacious and let's jump to the third row and have a look at the third row so you push that over, yep, you push go. that up. Oh, it's actually not bad. There's wow, actually quite a lot of space there. It's really good, actually. So I go to here. Yeah, you can actually sit in there, can't you? Pull this up, pull this back. Wow, it's okay for two adults. Um, you know, pretty okay. The, the back rest is a, a little bit, it's a little bit uh, straight. But in terms of room and space, you know, my knee, there's still a little bit of room between my knee and the, the second row. And mind you, the second row can also go forward a little bit more if we want to. For adults, for short trips, I don't see a problem. It's great. In the interior as well, the trim level is just the trend. So this is the entry level version, but you still get leather seats. Uh, you still get some really nice materials and also you get some storage so there's storage up here and then there's a glove box down there so very similar to the ranger on the interior um, but obviously with the third row and with the load space in the interior of the car um, it could be a really practical family car as well mm. and also with safety features um, they are very very similar as well uh, this one's got autonomous, uh, autonomous emergency braking Adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, uh, cross traffic alert, keyless entry start, uh, lane keep assist, rain sensing wipers. Uh, it's got a off road screen as well, same as the uh, the Ranger. Uh, parking sensors front and rear, rear view um, camera and a 360 degree camera, and speed speed sign recognition. So again, like um, if you press. Um, this off-road button right here, it shows you an off-road screen like the Ranger. Basically, they are exactly the same. 
So it shows you a front camera, show you what's in front of you. Because these cars are so big and so tall, it's actually sometimes really hard to see what's in front of you. Mm. Um, it also has a locking differential. So this is a, a four-wheel drive car. Um, so basically, I believe they should have the same system as the, um, the Ranger as well. Mm. So it's got different modes as well for four, four auto, two high, two low, uh, four low and four high. So they have the same drive modes as the uh, Ranger Wildtrak. We're in the Everest. Yeah, so a very similar experience. Um, it feels like deja vu, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> We've just driven the Ranger, um, yeah. which is a really good drive, actually. Um, and so we're going to try and feel if there's any difference in the Everest. Um, like, I, like we said before, this has got the two-liter four-cylinder turbo engine. Um, so it's going to be a little bit less power than the three-liter V6 but it's still quite a quiet engine actually. So I believe the, 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 with the driving impression, the only difference is the power from the engine and also the suspension. This engine, I believe, is the same engine as my old generation Ranger Raptor. It's also a two liter, uh, four cylinder bi-turbo engine. Um, this one is detuned a little bit. That said, um, Although it's only a two-liter engine, it's still got quite a lot of power. Mm. Yeah, see, if I step on it, it still goes. Yeah, wow. Well, uh, okay. It's a heavy car, but you don't feel like that. No, you, you feel, feel like, yeah, yeah, I feel like it's a light car. I think it's um, because of the, the torque. You know, it's 500 Newton meters. Mm. I mean, that's a lot of torque. That's right. And, and I feel like um, after driving the V6, that this car is actually easier to rev. It's actually more willing to rev. And also, I think they tuned the, uh, the transmission pretty well. So if you step, I'm in normal mode right now. If you step a little bit, it's automatic downshifts qu quite eagerly, yeah. and you know make sure the engine's always in the right right uh, rev range mm -hmm. uh, to extract that uh, power from the from the engine. Um, I, I I think the right quality um, is better actually in right, this. Yeah, uh, it yeah. feels more softer, uh, yeah. more. Uh, compliant, more compliant than yeah. the than the wild track, especially over the small bumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. more comfortable, definitely. Mm. Um, so, I guess they tuned the suspension a bit more softer. Mm. Um, the rear suspension is coil spring for this one, so that helps uh, with yeah. the uh, the the posture of the car, and also when you ride over bumps, I guess it soaks up the the bumps um, better yep. compared to leaf springs. Um, so that's really good. Um, and I think there's less road noise as well. Mm. Do you find that? I think so. Uh, as well. It's a quieter cabin. Oh wow! And um, I just realized you can actually switch these modes on the go. Mm -hmm. I was wow. I was driving yeah. and I changed it to a send mode. Right. So it automatically changed to four high. Yeah. And then locks the rear diff. I could me. feel the diff locking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Can feel it, especially when you're trying to turn around. Yeah. I guess uh, if you're under a certain speed, I think you can just change mode on the go. That's Makes really, sense. really, really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I love the screen on these cars. Like it's it's so nice having a screen. This is one of the benefits of having new technology. Mm. Um, I'm not a huge fan of having massive screens everywhere, but having the screen in the middle there mm. allows you to see everything that's going on with the car. You know, whether the diff is locked or not. You know, mm. what mode it's in. So uh, yeah, that was a great, uh, interesting drive uh, and review. What do you think of the car, Luan? I think it's really amazing actually. Like it's such a big car, such a capable car with the four wheel drive yeah. capabilities as well. And it's really similar to the Ranger. The interior is really similar. It's got a really high quality fit and finish and also materials. Uh, and for the price point, $71, really $72,000. It's, it's, it's such a good family car. And it's got, you know, a third row, it's got seven seats. So it's a little bit better in the, than the Ranger in that respect as well. Yeah, so I'm really impressed with this car, Frank. Uh, it offers a lot of features and a lot of practicality for, for the price. Mm. I also think the new generation looks amazing uh, with the new look, the sculptured look, these very nice sculptured bonnet, the, the front lights, everything just gels together really nicely. We are, because when we reviewed this, we didn't have enough time to go off-road because I think these vehicles from Ford 
actually they are very capable off road. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess when I get my Ranger Raptor, uh, we will be filming some off road um, sort of reviews and clips for you guys to to see. So overall, um, thank you for watching um, and appreciate uh, if you could subscribe and like to help our channel grow. Uh, and we'll be bringing you more vehicles like this and also some sports cars as well. Uh, so thank you again. All right. See you next see time. You, see you next time.